Hello students, this is Taranam Jahan. Hope all are doing well. So let's begin with the new chapter from the economics now. The second chapter, People as Resource. People as a resource. People as a resource is termed as the person having skills and technology. And any person who can create something new Something in new productive work is called as human capital. Now human capital is one of the important factor in production. And we preserve this by giving them good health and education. Now we have four factors of production as you all know. What are those four factors of production? Land, labor, capital and production. All these four factors helps in increasing the national income. So let's have an overview of this chapter. People as a resource wants to tell you that the population is an asset for the economy rather than a liability. People, those who are having the skills and the abilities in order to turn any of the things that has been given in a in a productive way, utilizing it anything, any of the resource in a productive way will definitely add something new to the economy. It will increase the economy, it will increase the national income, the person who is having the skills and ability in order to use the resource in a productive way by utilizing its skills and abilities. So this is a positive side of the larger population, those who are having the skills and abilities. So don't consider them in a negative way that the high population from where to feed them, from where to give them education. The positive side is the people are having a skills and abilities. Just we have to polish them by providing the proper food, proper education, proper access to their health facilities so that the population should be in a good health in order to utilize their skills and abilities in a proper way. Investment in human capital through education, training and medical care will definitely give you a very good returns in the form of investment that is physical capital. Here the fact is that the people who are educated, healthier will only gain income. They will make money. No, it is not like that. Even the society can gain in any other indirect way because of the more educated and healthier population because these people may give them the employment opportunities those who are rich enough more educated healthier people they will open certain companies they will give the employment opportunities so in this way even in the indirect way even the society gains from this educated and healthier people so it is just a chain over here one healthier people educated person who is the rich person will open a new factory and give the employment opportunities to the person who are not educated even, who are not having a proper health care. So in this way, even the healthier educated people are having a higher income plus even the society who are not educated directly or given the health care will also gain the, high, uh, the income, they can gain the income. So in fact, human capital is a one way superior to other resource as they can make use of the other resources. We are the people who are having a good skills and ability, a good knowledge. Then with that, we are creating certain resources and we are utilizing the skills and ability of the other persons also to involve in that in order to make the finished product. Like how we are utilizing the land, labor. We are utilizing the labor. We are giving them the employment opportunities. We are utilizing their skills and abilities by providing them the employment there in order to make the finished goods. So in fact, the human capital is a one way superior to the other resource as they can make use of the other's resources. So investment in human resource can give a high rates of returns in the future. Like how the educated parents are found to invest more heavily on the education of their child. Human capital is a stock of knowledge. They have an abundance of ability in order to perform labor so as to produce an economic value for the any product.
ह्यूमन परफॉर्म मेनी एक्टिविटीज वन वे टू क्लासीफाई दिज एक्टिविटीज आर द इकनॉमिक एक्टिविटीज एंड नॉन इकनॉमिक एक्टिविटीज नो वॉट आर इकनॉमिक एक्टिविटीज इकनॉमिक एक्टिविटीज आर वन ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट एक्टिविटी दैट इंक्रीज द नेशनल इनकम हाउ इफ यू परफॉर्म एनी वर्क फॉर एनी वन दे पेयर्स इन द फॉर्म ऑफ सैलरीज और फॉर एनी सर्विसेस सो एनी वर्क थ्रू विच वी अर्न इज कॉल्ड एज इकनॉमिक एक्टिविटी फॉर एग्जाम्पल टीचिंग इंजीनियरिंग डॉक्टर लेबर्स शॉपकीपर्स लॉयर्स एक्सेट्रा नाउ दीज इकनॉमिक एक्टिविटीज आर फर्दर डिवाइडेड इन टू प्राइमरी सेक्टर सेकेंडरी सेक्टर एंड टेरिशरी सेक्टर now what are primary sector primary sector which are involved in agriculture fishing mining forestry animal husbandry etc and the secondary activities or the secondary sectors are manufacturing only related with factories production and then what is tertiary sector trade health education transport tourism bank it companies any sector which provides you services is called as tertiary sectors so these economic activities are further divided into these three sectors it is primary secondary and tertiary sector and these activities add value to the national income these activities are called as economic activities or market activities and non market activities now what is market activity and what is non market activity market activities are the activities for example using print media to make the customer aware of the product or through the ads on the tvs by doing this we do earn profits or we are doing it for free we are earning profits out of it so in it includes production and consumption through which we can earn certain profit from the consumers it also increases national income whatever the market activities are been done it always add into the national income these are profit motive the main motive of the market activities is to earn profits and for example like farming government jobs business all these comes under market activities then what are non market activities i'll give you an example household work done by the wife or tuitions given by the teachers to his own child if i am take, giving a tuition to my own child whether i am earning anything out of it whether it is a profit motive one no it only includes exchange system it is a non profit motive one it does not increase any national income but all the non market activities are there it is not going to add anything to your national income it is a non profit motive because we don't get pay for it for example a housewife doing a work in the house she is ne- never paid for it in return she'll get an exchange of love finish so those are the non market activities where you don't get anything for a pay just an exchange purpose no profit motive economic activities by men and women so here if we see that the majority of the women in india have low education and skill formation and those women are really paid very less than compared to the men most women works where the job security is not at all there they can be removed any time various activities relating to the legal protection is also not given legal protection in the sense the maternity leave should be given to them child care and the social security system should be given to them so such things are completely absent for the low educated women those who are low those who are having a low education and less skills and they are paid less than compared to the women but however the women with the higher education and higher having the skill formation are paid at par with the men if they are highly educated so this is what the economic activity we are done within with the men and women then compare to the education and skills quality of population or 
you can say the quality of people. Literacy rate, health and skills determines the quality of the population. Illiterate and unhealthy population can be a liability for the economy. Literate and healthy population can be made into assets for the economy. So literate and healthy population contribute towards the GDP of the country. What is GDP? Gross domestic product. Now we are usually talking about national income, national income. What is a national income? Total amount of money earned within the country is called as national income. Now again, this quality of the population or the quality of the people is classified into two. Health and education. Now let's discuss one by one what is health and what is education for the quality of people or a quality of population. Education. Only educated person can bring the change in the society and economic development of the country. Education contributes towards the growth of the society and it also enhances the national income, cultural richness and increased efficiency of the governments. Government has taken the major steps in order to educate the people and to bring the development in the country. They have opened many Sarva Siksha Abhyan was started by the government like giving education to all the people till the age of 14 years for free. Midday meal scheme for the better attendance and health. In the 11th five year plan, government focused on the higher education. Many colleges and universities were opened. Many new courses were introduced. In each district, Navodaya Vidyalaya was also opened. More girls schools were opened. Government increased the expenditure on the education from 0.64% to 3.3%. Literacy rate in India. Though the government has taken many steps in giving education to all, but still we don't see much of the difference. But the changes in the literacy rate shows the work of the government. In 1951, the literacy rate was around 18%, whereas by 2011, it was around 74%. But the literacy rate of males are more than compared to the girls, that is 16.6%. Similarly, urban areas have more literacy rates than compared to the rural that is around 16.1%. If we speak the state-wise, Kerala is having the much literacy rate that is around 93.9%, whereas in Bihar, we have the literacy rate of around 63%. After education, health. Health plays a very important role in the society. If the person is healthy, he will be active all day and even in the place of work, he will show the activeness. But if the person is sick, the person will either be on leave or he will not be active at work. So this is going to affect the economy if the sick person is going to do the work inactively. So in order to convert the person from liability to asset, the government has taken many steps. Now, what is liability and what is asset? We are speaking about the liability and asset. Liability is nothing but to be a burden, answerable for something. You are responsible enough to be answered for something. Asset is nothing but a useful or a valuable thing or a person. It can be in the way of talent, strong, benefits, skills, knowledge, etc. So, in order to control the health facility, government has taken many steps so that the population can be healthy and active in the society in order to increase the GDP and the national income of the country. So what are the efforts that has been taken by the government is in order to maintain the health of the people, more hospitals, clinics, both in the rural and the urban areas were made by the government. Free health checkups and campaigns were performed. Many government colleges were opened by the government. So these were the steps taken in order to improve the health facility in the both rural and urban areas 
by the government. Now if you see the health infrastructure over the year that is 1951 to 2010, you will see that how the government has taken the effort in order to improve the education and the health facility of the people but still we are lacking behind, lacking behind in the health and even in the education. Unemployment, unemployment it says to exist when people are willing to work but they are not finding the job. The workforce population includes people from 15 years to 59 years, those who are capable of employment. In case of India, we have unemployment in both rural and urban areas. However, the nature of the unemployment differs in rural areas. In case of rural area, there is a seasonal, disguised and unemployment. Urban areas have mostly educated unemployment. So let's discuss one by one all the three kinds of employment. Unemployment, disguised, unemployment, seasonal unemployment and educated unemployment. Unemployment. First we should know about the unemployment. What type of an unemployment we are talking about here? Unemployment in the in the case where the people are skilled, they are educated, but still they are not having any job. Why such major problem is there in India? Though the people is willing to work, but they are not finding the job. This is the major problem which is faced by India. So what kind, what such type of unemployment are there in India? There are three major unemployment in India. What are those? The seasonal unemployment, disguised unemployment and educated unemployment. Seasonal unemployment, it happens when the people are not able to find jobs during some month of the year. This type of unemployment usually happens in the rural areas where they have no work for the season of farming is not there for two to three months. So such type of an unemployment is there only in the rural areas. Now the disguised unemployment, in this case people appear to be employed. They show that they are employed. Some work requires the work only for the few people but engages more people than it needs. The extra workers are called as disguised unemployed. This usually happens again with the agricultural family where in the one land three people can work unnecessarily five people are going to work there. So those are the extra people, two more extra people have been uh, employed over there unnecessarily when there is no need. So such type of an em employment is called as disguised unemployment. Now educated unemployment, it is more common in urban areas. Many educated youth are not able to find a job. They are called educated unemployed. Now effects of unemployment. How the unemployment is affecting the Indian economy? India is a very large country where many people are unemployed. Due to this, they did not get the money for the survival. Unemployment reduces the national productivity. It also reduces the national health. The problem of unemployment causes loss of human resource is nothing but the human capital. Labor waste their maximum time in search of unemployment. Unemployment deprives a man of all the sources of income. As a result, he grows poorer and poorer. Therefore, unemployment generates poverty. They indulge themselves in crimes, drugs because of the depression and this also increases the crime rates. They are forced to do the work which they have never opted for. So here are some of the important questions that have been given to you so please do try to answer with the help of the ppt in your registers so with this we have finished the second chapter of economy people as a resource and i hope that you people have understood the chapter and if your people are having any query you can make a list and you can ask